Hello and welcome along to the 2021-22 Irish Cup final preview with me, Daniel Cody, and Charlie Betts from the Honest Football Podcast. He's back for all things Ireland and we are here for the Northern Irish Cup final, which we finally know will take place between Crusaders and Ballymena United after a long old wait. So a quick thing to say, we are recording this before the final games of the Irish League season, which means the permutations bit I've got to give you first is even more interesting and difficult. So the third spot in the Irish League would normally guarantee you a place in European football, unless the cup winners finish below that. And that obviously is going to be Crusaders or Ballymena, who may well finish outside the top three. Definitely in Ballymena's case, possibly in Crusaders' case. So one of these teams, ironically, could still Glen Torren's European spot, which is even more interesting, given what happened in a run-up to the semi-finals, which I think we need to touch on before the final prediction, because Ballymena beat Nuri in a delayed semi-final after Glen Torren were expunged from the competition or removed from the competition after fielding an ineligible player. So, Charlie, let's quickly cover that before the final. Yeah, I think, you know, taking out the uh, the results aside, I think it was slightly harsh in the sense of it was all to do with a player who played reserve games, got sent off in a reserve game but because he played a certain number of first team games, meant he couldn't qualify for a cup, um, which was called the Intermediate Cup. There was a, an, a computer system, which apparently if you put in the players, it will tell you whether they're eligible or not, if they're suspended. Uh, I think it's called Comet. Um, and that didn't flag up for Glentor and that um, Joe Crow wasn't available. Uh, so on that basis, he's then played... The issue being is that that was, in fairness, that was notified to the IFA the next day after the game. But then we had this protracted uh, circus, basically, which has taken, when you consider the, the original um, semi final was due to be played on the 2nd of April. We're now on the 27th, the day after the actual semi final. So, talking like, you know, 25 days since we've had this. Um, why it takes so long, I don't know. But in a, in a nutshell, a very long winded thing for Glenn Torren to still have the same outcome, which was going to two appeals, but still not being in. To the Irish Cup uh, semi-final against obviously Vanamina. So a bit of a cock up on someone's part where I don't know because there's a whole manner of a spider's web of stuff to sort out. But the ultimate thing is, is that Glenn Torrent filled an eligible player and here we are. Exactly. And we've got to the stage now where we have a final between currently fourth place Crusaders in the Irish League, could be third by the end of the final day, and Ballymena United who will definitely finish in eighth. And I do want to mention also, as we often do with these, that the Irish Cup gives us some of the best sponsorship names in the world. And this year, it is the Samuel Gelston's Whiskey Irish Cup final. And that is not going to be topped for some time, let me tell you that. Now, let's get to the serious matter, which is the final here, because this is a game that on paper looks like it could be very even. In terms of head-to-heads this year, they've played in another cup as well. They've played four times, they've won two apiece. They both snuck past their semi-finals by the odd goal, albeit Ballymena against lower league opposition, but with 10 men later on in the game. And Ballymena, despite being in a lower place in the league, we know are a very strong cup team and have been under David Jeffrey for a number of years now. So a quick preview before we look at the two teams in detail and their semi-final performance. It does promise to be a close one, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think what's quite interesting is that both teams... Crusaders have been in scintillating form in the league since their semi-final and Ballymena have been very up and down, but the confidence of maybe, you know, a semi-final win and actually they, they gave Carrick a thumping at the weekend when on a time of recording. So you could argue they're just on that increase again and it's probably the, the perfect time to have a final. You know, you've got two wins out of two. So I think you've got two teams that are starting to build up a bit of momentum and like we said, probably evenly matched both in the, the quality of players that they've got and also actually probably the style of football, which can sometimes be brutal to watch, but can also be quite exciting. So I'm hoping for the latter. But yeah, I think it's a good mix of of similarities and differences, actually, in that sense. And of course, the the final, as we mentioned a little bit earlier on in the the protracted permutations, is not just about the trophy and the prize money. It is also a spot in Europe and now the Europa Conference first qualifying round, which, yes, Crusaders are likely to be in the playoff, even if they do finish in fourth, but Ballymena have missed out on that entirely. So for them it's a massive opportunity to get Europe against all the odds, isn't it? Well, the, the rumour is, is, you know, if you do get that fight, you talk about 200,000, which yeah. for a club, you know, particularly, not, not that you should be comparing them, particularly, but Bad, I mean, being a part-time club, 200 grand is a huge amount of money. So it's, it's, it's massive for both clubs. But I think particularly Cru- Crusaders have been in the wilderness a little bit in the last few years, haven't quite been in that title fight, struggled a bit in the playoffs, sort of for the European playoffs. So 
you know, that money, as we know, um, uh, non-league level and, and, and sort of in the Irish league particularly, that can give you a boost of two or three years, you know, being, you know, that, that 200 grand supposedly. So, yeah, it's massive. It's much more than just winning the prestigious cup final, I think, in that sense. Yeah, and I mean, at this point, I would normally plug our pre-season predictions for the Irish League, but they were so horribly wrong. That <laughs> I just want to keep quiet, but I should, for any benefits, say they are in the eye above. <laughs> but let's talk about the two teams, because I know you watch both semi-finals, and we'll start, just to help your memory, with the one that was four weeks ago nearly now, which is Cliftonville v Crusaders. Of course, on paper, based on league position, a little bit of a surprise, although Cliftonville have got, you could argue, more important things to worry about at the moment. But Crusaders coming behind from an early goal, they played that sort of backs to the wall towards the end. A lot of late yellow cards, a lot of late fouls. But what did you make of the performance? Well, it sort of kickstarted what's been that run that I was talking to you about, really. And I think it was, I mean, it was definitely against the run of play. I think if you were a a Crusaders fan that night and you're being honest, they were lucky to come out of that. However, it is that grit and determination and the, the things that we'll talk about in a minute, that stoutness that has probably got them where they are. I think what's been in recent form, because I watched them on Friday night against Cliftonville in the league, and, and Ben Kennedy is, is, I don't think people have quite seen the Ben Kennedy that we had over here in, in the Football League. No. You know, I know that in some Irish League players who played in England, played a handful of games, maybe a dozen here, a dozen there, played 150 times in the Football yeah. League. You know, you don't do that and not be a talented player. I don't quite know why we haven't seen as much of that here, but recently, and particularly the game, the game against Cliftonville on Friday night, everything that was good that Crusaders had went through him. I think the issue they've got is that obviously if he is either nullified or as they saw on Friday night when they took him off the pitch, they were three one up and the game finished free all, they do lose a lot of their attacking impetus. So for me, I think there's that defensive stoutness, but they need to have that creativity. They need to have that guile, which people like Ben Kennedy brings you. And to a point, Paul Heatley, he's probably the wrong side of 32, 33 now. So they're fleeting glimpses, but if they can channel that and harness that, then it's a brilliant match because you've got the stout defensiveness. You've got that, those big centre-halves, you don't lose a lot. And then you've got the the the, the attacking um, threat going forward. It's when they don't, I think I mentioned the pre-season predictions, which I know we're not referring to too much, but they've always struck as a disjointed team the last couple of years, Crusaders. And that's sort of been why maybe they haven't quite challenged for that top two or three. But when they do get it right, it, it's brilliant. And one of the best teams in the league in terms of having and playing to a, a game plan, it's just very temperamental on that front in that sense. Yeah, completely agree. And it links nicely to a point I'm going to make about Balamina later, actually. But let's move on to their semi-final. Of course, a lot more recent due to all the arbitrations, court hearings and whatever else going on. They played lower league opposition in Nuri in the end as a result of that. Mm. They got that goal early in the second half, but then a red card and backs to the wall. They made hard work of it, didn't they? Oh, they have done. And to be honest, it seemed I, I went to watch them against Glenarvan a few weeks ago, actually, as well. And they, they do make life hard for themselves. I think... On the converse of Crusaders, the biggest weakness of Alameda is that centre of the park. You know, Stephen McCulloch scored a, a wonderful free kick last night, but I've watched him a couple of times on TV. I've watched him live. He is a very good wing back or full back. He is not a centre midfielder. But, and this is one of the points I probably wanted to make, the difference between the two sides is the depth of that squad. You know, a couple of injuries and Balamina are down to bare bones. And that feels like that's every week at the minute. And I think they're having to play him in centre midfield. He's not quite got the mobility. He hasn't, in my opinion, got the ball retention to necessarily be that commanding set midfielder. And I know they've got Leroy Miller, but he's the one who has to link up to that centre forward. Otherwise, they are, the, the, the forwards are so isolated if Leroy Miller isn't between the two. So you need him to bomb on. You then need someone who's got a bit of quality on the ball to so just sit there and just break it up a little bit and then give it to the... I know you shouldn't say this, it sounds a bit Sunday league, but give it to the players that can play. But I don't really see that with, with McCulloch. And, and Josh Kelly as well had a really bad injury and he's just... I don't... He doesn't strike me as someone who's quite up to match fitness properly yet so again glimpses of him against Glenarvan were brilliant other glimpses were horrendous and the politest way possible you know so for me the weakness is is actually when Balamina try and play through that middle I think that's when they get caught they get caught overplaying but it is brutal to watch but they probably are most effective with that slightly cold rain and you know Balamina fans won't appreciate me saying that but that cold rain approach of let's get the ball forward quickly play off that second ball and that's when you get people like Mike and Mikey Place, who they signed from the south of Ireland in January, and Paul McElroy and people like that, who have got brilliant attacking threat, but they struggle to get the ball to them through the middle, and they almost need to play off that second ball. And I think if they've got David Parkhouse fit, who holds the ball up well, it's a good game plan. Ironically, it's a very counteracting sort of style to what Crusaders probably want Balamina to play. I think they want them to play in the middle, and then that's when they hit them and nick it, and you get Ben Kennedy and people out on the ball. So... Balamina have to play to their strengths. What doesn't help is getting a man sent off. As I say, the bare bones squad as it was. And actually, Kim Nelson, I've seen a few times. He's, he's a decent centre-half. 
What was going on with him at that point, I have no idea. It was such a ridiculous red card. But he'll be a big loss because I don't think, as we mentioned, and I don't want to speak ill of a few of them, but there's no depth in that squad. There's a good 11. I really start to struggle after that, unfortunately, due to injuries and things. So the thing that I might, they might sneak a set piece or something like that. But with the way it's going, and I think that Ben Kennedy battle in the midfield, I can probably see this going slightly more one way than the other personally. Yeah, I can understand that. And actually, you've linked to my my other question about Balamina, which was part one, how important that David Parkhouse is back because he's another man who's returned from long-term injury and he has made a bit of a difference up there from a couple of games I've seen. And at the back, they've let him 51 goals this season. They couldn't afford to lose another defender. Are they two things that ultimately might cost them the cup final? I think so. And I, I get why of the ruling, but obviously you've got Sean O'Neill, who a very, very experienced, very, very good goalkeeper. And you've seen that when you watch him commands that box, you see Marshall's the back four or five very, very well. But because he's a Crusaders player, he's on loan. Obviously he can't play against his own club. So Williamson's a decent keeper, but I think that's where that sort of goes back to what I was just saying, that depth. And that's where it starts. And then losing a centre half. Connor Keeley is a good ball winner. What was good about Kim Nelson is he was quite good at reading the play and covering in behind. Connor Keeley was brilliant. Anything in the air, I fancy him probably against most centre-forwards in the league. It's the mobility and maybe those issues slightly behind where Kim Nelson would be that covering centre-half. I don't know if they've got another one of them in the squad who can do that sort of role. So that balance of Keeley and, and Kim Nelson is probably, obviously, it's not going to happen. They're not going to be playing against, with each other. So I think they've lost that balance, sorry, a little bit is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, that will worry me at the back. The number of goals is uncharacteristically for a David Jeffrey side quite high. In the years that I've been watching them, they've never been the most free-flowing of goal scoring teams, but they've never let in the hatfuls that they have recently, to be brutally honest. I mean, even the one that I watched against Glenarvan, against nine men at one point, and they've, they've let in three goals. So do you know what I mean? It's 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 baffling how, for a David Jeffries side, how many goals they've let in. And I do think it's just, goes back to what I was just saying, it's just having that, that balance and that harmony and maybe for injuries and possibly slight recruitment issues, they've struggled to get that right balance of uh, across the pitch. And then going forward, as I mentioned, I think they have to ironically miss out the midfield to be effective. But you are then running that risk of giving the way, giving the ball away a lot. And it goes back to maybe that fitness issue of being a part-time team. If you're playing long ball, it can be effective, but you're not getting, you're not going to keep the ball a lot. So you're chasing it a lot. And Crusaders are a full-time team. So you do wonder at later stages of the game, is that sort of strategy, is that way of playing going to come back to bite them a little bit? So I don't know. It's, it's finely poised, but I do think Crusaders probably have those advantages over them at the minute. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, the, the, the issues you mentioned with Palomino is something we alluded to even at the start of the season, pre-season, and it hasn't been addressed yet, unfortunately. I'm glad you mentioned your trip to the Glenarvan game because that was going to be my second plug of the day, which is all of your match day action from Northern Ireland's up there too. And this is the first final we've done where none of the players you've interviewed are featuring, so I can't even show them <laughs> off either. But... It is Balamina's second appearance in a final within three years. In fact, the first predictions we did for a final was with featuring Balamina United. But I'm going to ask you now, that dreaded time, what do you think is going to happen? I think you've alluded to the fact that fitness might play a part in this, that maybe squad depth might play a part in this. Am I right to say that you're probably edging Crusaders? Yeah, I don't think there'll be a lot in it because Crusaders, as much as they've been in good form, they haven't struck me as a team that are going to put four or five past Balamina, but... I think in the goal, they've got a good goalkeeper in Johnny Tuffy. He's very good in around his box, which is sort of where Balamina get a lot of their goals from, is those set pieces, is those balls in, you know, from the diagonals or from crosses in the box. And you've got a very good keeper dealing with that. So I think just on little things like that, and also it depends. David Jeffries is a very, very wily old manager. There might be a trick up his sleeve where he's noticed if I can stop Ben Kennedy, I feel like he can stop Crusaders. If he can do that, who knows? But I just don't think they've got the players to do that. So I'm going to go for a very, very narrow, I think. 2-1, possibly 3-1 if they go maybe, I know I say this a lot, and it never happens in any of the games I predict, but last five, 10 minutes, Balamino go pushing forward for an equaliser and a third one goes in or something like that. But I think, I, I can't see either team keeping the clean sheet, but I do think it probably, Ben Kennedy will be the difference. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And actually my prediction, it comes down to discipline, to be honest, because mm. if they can get people around Ben Kennedy, as you mentioned, it's not just that, it's doing that without picking up yellow cards, without picking up a red card, which Balamino mm. have been, arguably more prone to this season than in previous <laughs> ones. And that is just because being stretched further over the pitch, not having that squad depth, and you do end up getting dragged into positions you don't want to, and that lack of familiarity causes these problems. So that is a key aspect for me. If they can do that, I wouldn't be shocked to see them win it. I think with them not having a chance at the European playoff, mm -hmm. there is more riding on it for Balamina. Balamina have been in this game more recently, 
And look, we're only 10 days away now. It's the 7th of May. It's Windsor Park. Anything can happen. I'm going to go for Valamina to win it on penalties, <laughs> nonetheless, because who doesn't want drama on a Saturday afternoon? And it could be the same day that Luton Town make the playoffs. So happy days all around. But that is our prediction for the 2022 Samuel Gelston's Whiskey Irish Cup final. Let us know what you think. What do you think the score will be? And who do you think is going to come out on top? If you did enjoy the video, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for regular content from the podcast. Thank you to Charlie for joining us as always. And we'll see you again here very, very soon.